Make sure you wake up early so you don't miss a thing. Family Life Mornings. I think I need to pay more attention uh, because every year I watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Oh, yes. Uh, Many times it's just on in the background, not really intently watching it. So maybe that's my excuse for not knowing this. Maybe you guys knew this, but I did not know. Uh, The very first one was in 1924, by the way. But they didn't have those big balloons back Mm. then, the animal balloons. They had... Real animals from the Central Park Zoo. I didn't realize that. That sounds dangerous. I know. A lot of cleanup on aisle three. (laughs) Um, I mean, mean, we're talking not just little. They had elephants, tigers, all on loan from the Central Park Zoo. So balloons didn't arrive until a few years later. Uh, So it was 1927. And here's the other cool thing. that, And again, maybe Mm -hmm. they mention this every year. I just miss it. But there was no deflation procedure. So what they did, they just simply released the balloons in the air. And then if you found one later... You can return it to Macy's to get some money. I mean, you could take the, the really? balloon back. So I just find that very, wow. very interesting. Okay, now here's the next thing for your quiz at your Thanksgiving Day table. You can okay. say, do you know what the first balloon animal was in 1927? Huh? Anybody know? Are we know? supposed to guess? If you like. I'd you guess Snoopy. Snoopy. I was going to guess Snoopy, and mm-hmm. then I was thinking maybe it was like Rocky or no, something. No, like, no, 1920. No, Felix the Cat. Oh, oh okay. No, Felix the Cat. The wonderful one. <laughs> now that I remember the, the yeah, scene. Yeah. <laughs> a little serious, a little silly, a perfect balance to start your day. Family Life Mornings. Well, you might have wondered where I've been for the past few days. And no, I didn't get to go any place really fun or exciting. Uh, in fact, I've been taking bereavement time, which... Oh, boy, that doesn't sound good. But my sweet, sweet father-in-law last week entered hospice and then Friday morning went home to be with the Lord. And I know that without a doubt. One of my favorite early memories was like the first time I had dinner with the family Mm -hmm. and we would sit at the table and dad would say grace and he would say, thank you, Lord, for sending your son to die on Calvary's Hill. Hmm. And he would say that like every single time we would say grace. And a lot of times, you know, you sit down and you thank the Lord for your food and you thank him for maybe your home and your family. But do you thank him for that sacrifice like every single time you sit down to eat? And that was the kind of man my father-in-law was. He had a certainty about God and his sacrifice of his son, about the salvation that he had in Christ and about the fact that he was going to spend eternity in heaven. Not a shadow Hmm. of a doubt. And through all the conversations that we had last week with him over and over again, he knew without a doubt he was going to heaven. Hmm. So the question today is, do you know without a doubt that you would spend eternity with Jesus if you were to die in this very instant? And maybe you've spent a lot of time in religion, you know, maybe you haven't spent a lot of time in relationship. And so I would encourage you in the memory of my father-in-law, to make sure that you know Jesus. And if you're not sure what that means, would you please go to FLN.org and click the box that says, Do You Know Jesus? Family Life Mornings. Starting your day off with a smile. You might not be able to get it off your face for the rest of the day. Family Life. A camel, a cow, and a donkey oh, I've heard walk this one into a town. Is this a joke? <laughs> it is not a joke. Oh, okay. Trudy Wilcox and some friends had just pulled into a mobile home park, and they saw a cow. And one of them said, hey, wait a minute. That's a donkey over there, and there's a camel. <laughs> The three friends were traveling together. I'm talking about the animals now, Wait, so not the guys... people in the car. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, the people <laughs> called the authorities to see if anyone knew who the owners were of these three traveling together. And incidentally, they were traveling towards the direction of the North Star. Mm. Wilcox said if they can't locate the owner, they're halfway towards having a live nativity this Christmas. Wow. <laughs> How about that? Steve, a baby and three guys walking around and Man. maybe some shepherds. <laughs> wow. We we have quite the story going on. Sometimes they make you smile. Sometimes they make you think. Sometimes they make you do both at the same time. Kind of like walking and chewing gum. Kind of. Family Life Mornings. There's going to be a, a, a Jeopardy... Uh, 
big thing coming up in early January called Jeopardy, the greatest of all time. They're having the three top contestants uh, of all time, and it's going to be several nights, and that's just going to be kind of fun. And Now, I'm very familiar with James Holzhauer. He was the most recent. Yeah, he was fairly current. Yeah, and Ken Ken Jennings, I remember back in 2000. He was the guy before him. (laughs) He was the guy before him. Yep. Brad Rutter I'd never heard of. He's an actor and a TV show host. Brad Rutter, he made over $4,800,000 in a Jeopardy. Wow. Never heard of him. Who are rich guys I've never heard of? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right? May I make a confession about the huh. game of Jeopardy? Because every time I go to, I mean, I just a true story. I have difficulty spelling Jeopardy. I always mess up the. Really? Yeah. I mean, how do you spell Jeopardy? Now I question it. Isn't okay. it J E O? Yeah. I always say J R D Y. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys got it right. I mean, I always say, I'm, as I'm writing it down, I go J E A P A. No, that doesn't look right. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I'm glad it's Jeopardy and not a uh, spelling bee. That's what I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. What are TV shows that are difficult for Steve to spell for 400, please, Alex? Coming up in January, Jeopardy, the greatest of all time. Family Life Mornings, the nicest way to start your day on Family Life. Darren and his wife have lived in their house for two years. And they have grown increasingly frustrated with an electrical outlet in their kitchen. It's right down near the floor because it doesn't work. Uh, And the covering to the outlet wasn't loose. In fact, it was snugly in place. So finally, Darren called up an electrician, had him come over and do some other work. And he said, hey, would you check this outlet? It doesn't work. And Mm -hmm. so he got out his tools and he confirmed there's no current to the plug. And then he tried to take the cover off, and uh, there wasn't anything to unscrew. Hmm. And then he realized, man, I've got to just get in behind it and pry this thing off. And finally, he got it off. Well, it turns out it wasn't a real outlet. It was the covering for a secret safe. Unfortunately for Darren, (laughs) there was no money inside. In fact, the only thing in the James Bond-like secret safe... Mm -hmm. A dead spider. Man. That's underwhelming. I hate when that happens. <laughs> I was a lot more excited when I went, dun, dun, dun. Is that story current? Current, I get it. Uh, no charge. Always here first thing. And no funky morning breath. Family Life Mornings. One of those little cans, they just hop right into my cart. I don't know, something about going to the grocery store this time of year. If I see canned pumpkin. Uh-huh. I have to buy one. I don't know oh. how many pumpkin pies I think I'm making, but it <laughs> seemed to have a little bit of a surplus. So when I saw this recipe, I thought, ooh, I need to tell you about this because it could like change your morning. You take some of that canned pumpkin and you whip it with maple syrup, ooh. pumpkin pie spice, mm. butter, mm. and salt. Hmm. You smear it on your toast. Ooh. You put it on sweet potatoes, anywhere that you would use butter this time of year. You can add a little bit of that pumpkin butter. I mean, if you're in the same situation with me where there was little cans, they just keep jumping into your cart without you even knowing it, right? Right. You know, you could smear it like on toast or uh-huh. your coworker's face. I mean, that's... <laughs> they do not like that. Mm, <laughs> yummy. <laughs> Great. <laughs> just nice. Starting your day with a smile and a dose of encouragement, too. Family Life Mornings. My eyes are bigger than my stomach. Mm. We see all that food at Thanksgiving, and we're <laughs> like, oh, that looks good. I'll, like, I'll take some of that and some of that and some of that. And then you fill it up, and you get through the dinner. And, well, you don't get through the dinner. There's still some leftovers. And apparently that can happen to corporations as well. Back in the early 50s, there was an order miscalculation, and a food industry giant had a post-holiday surplus of 260 tons of frozen turkey left over. So, leave it up to a great salesman, Gary Thomas, his name. He came up with an ultimate idea. He thought, well, wait a minute. On airlines, they have prepared meals. Go get 5,000 aluminum trays, and let's get an assembly line going and fill them with some of that turkey. Oh, let's put some peas and cornbread and sweet potatoes together. And that was the birth of the Swanson TV dinner. That's how it happened. Huh. Look, at that. Boy, look at that. Just that surplus. Wow. It's also the beginning of when that cherry cobbler was way, way too, it was like molten lava. lava. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They're here to infuse your morning with a positive outlook and a little caffeinated fun. It's Steve, Therese, and Randy on Family Life, a friend you can turn to. It took 153 days working between 12 and 15 hours a day, 
and it all went on over 1,500 pieces of paper. Minaj and his wife, Sue, along with their daughters, Karen and Krupa, said it was worth it all. They didn't write a book. They rewrote a book, the Bible. They hand wrote the Bible on all those pieces of paper. Susan said afterwards, my eyes would twitch, my hands would hurt, (laughs) but in the process, I found the Bible speaking to me inspiring and guiding me. Boy, you talk about getting into the word. This family did that. And the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. Well, you could start your day without Steve, Therese, and Randy, but why would you want to? We're family life, a friend you can turn to. Randy, I know you're not alone, and a lot of people right now are saying, oh, because your wife, Christina, loves the Hallmark Christmas movie. Oh, she has it on a lot, yes. There you go. Also, I know that you two like to exercise, uh, Mm -hmm. take walks and exercise and do more than that. Have I got the thing for you. Okay. Hallmark Christmas movie workout. It's a workout you can have while watching your Hallmark. Here's how it works. Oh, okay. Take uh-huh. notes. Every time you see someone drink hot chocolate during a movie, oh five my. jumping jacks. Oh, boy. Every time you see someone wearing a white, bright, not just a, not a bright winter coat, all right, a bright winter coat, five push-ups. And then when you see someone baking cookies in a Hallmark Christmas movie, it's time for five squats. So I know this will be a great idea. Christina will love it. So right. just to, I know you're not used to that. It's a little bit different. Usually the mm. only exercise thing you think about is over there when you hear crunches. All you think is potato chips. Uh, but no, no. Cookies. No, no. No, no. This is going to be great. It's Steve, Therese, and Randy on Family Life. A friend you can turn to. Sarah Hale. You may not know that name. Be thankful for Sarah Uh Hale, because for most of the 1800s, Thanksgiving was only celebrated in the Northeast. And Sarah wanted so much. This is not good enough. We need this to be a nationwide celebration of thankfulness. So she wrote not one, not two, many, many impassioned letters to President Abraham Lincoln and others in positions of power to say, hey, we need to make this a national holiday. And finally, it paid off in the formal proclamation on October 3rd, 1863, declaring Thanksgiving an official U.S. holiday. Does the name Sarah Hell ring a bell at all? It did not to me. Nope. You know, Sarah Hell, she was pretty good at writing those letters and other things as well. Sarah Hell wrote, Mary had a little lamb. Really? His fleece was white as snow. Wow. Do you know everywhere that Mary went, you know who was with her? That lamb is sure to go. (laughs) That same Sarah Hale. Who Mary had a little lamb. Wow. Uh Was part of having Thanksgiving a national holiday. Way to go, Sarah. That little lamb was so cute. You'll always wake up on the right side of the bed when you start your day with Steve, Therese, and Randy on Family Life, a friend you can turn to. Well, it's that time of year where you might feel that a little bit of a tickle in your throat. Mm. It turns into a scratch. The next thing you know, you wake up and you're like, is there spots? How red is it (laughs) in my sore throat? So here's a surefire way to nix a sore throat. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm not a big fan of going to the doctors if you don't need to. I'm not a big fan of taking medicine if you don't need to, because I feel like God's given us so much stuff, you know, and the food that we have and the plants that he's given to be able to cure a lot of things. So this is one of those remedies. All right. You take a tablespoon each of honey, Mm -hmm. which is really good for you. We're finding out more and more how good honey is. Vinegar, like apple cider vinegar and lemon juice. And you stir a tablespoon of each of those into a glass of water. You add a dash of cinnamon, and you drink it. I'm thinking about that vinegar. I'm thinking about that lemon juice. I'm thinking I'm just going to wash my hands a lot and just not get a sore throat. Okay. Yeah, not, <laughs> if that is your remedy, yeah. prevention is the best, best thing, right? I'm, I'm all for that. They don't need a request to be your friend. They already are. Steve, Teresa, and Randy on Family Life. A friend you can turn to. be one of the smartest horses ever. Uh, because every time someone comes over to ride this horse. Get on the back and 
Take a ride. The horse sees someone coming. Yeah. He just flaps down and he just lays down. He plays dead. Wow. Plays dead. Yes. <laughs> just lays there. Even no, no giddy up there. No huh? giddy up at all. He even he even loosens his tongue and puts oh. his hooves in weird positions to make it look like he can't even go on. <laughs> and then when dead. people walk away, gets right back up again. And then they come over to ride him. Boom. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I love that horse. <laughs> This is Family Life. A friend you can turn to. The final sunset. Well, at least for a while. A couple of nights ago, it went down in pinks and purples on the horizon. A lot of people took pictures because it's going to be the last sunset between now and the end of January. What? Welcome to Barrow, Alaska. Oh, you know, yeah. and as they have those big long days in the summer, they have those, well, no days basically in the winter. And so, yeah, that last sunset, a lot of people are, are recognizing it and they're, they're thankful for it. And it got me thinking, have you been thankful for a sunset lately? You know, we get one every single night, but we just kind of ignore it god gives us that gift so many gifts every day let's be thankful they're here to wake you up pick you up and lift you up steve Teresa, and randy on family life a friend you can turn to now if you're the type of person who gets a little bit annoyed when they hear jingle bells that's not a christmas song you mm. are absolutely right it is not a christmas song it was originally titled one horse open sleigh and it was written for thanksgiving Huh. Yes, James Pierpont in 1857 wrote that song, but it became so popular with both kids and adults that in 1859 it was reprinted, renamed, and rebranded for Christmas. Now, here's another little interesting, amazing uh-huh. Thanksgiving fact dealing with this uh, jo- James Pierpont who wrote this song. He was the uncle of John Pierpont Morgan. Yes, that J.P. Morgan. Oh. And even though he penned the first song heard from space, Jingle Bells was the first song heard up in space, Hmm. he struggled to make ends meet until his death, even though he was the uncle of the very, very rich J.P. Morgan. So there you go. Now you know why we title it Amazing Thanksgiving (laughs) Facts. It's amazing. On Family Life. Family Life Mornings with Steve, Therese, and Randy. Thanks for making us part of your day. We're a friend you can turn to. Well, we're getting together with some people over the next week or so for Thanksgiving. You might be having a conversation, and sometimes it's hard to hear when there's a lot of voices around the table. Mm -hmm. And so lean in with your right ear. Right ear. Okay. Right ear ear okay. that's the right way to okay. listen to somebody so just kind of lean in right. Uh-huh. Like, right, and, right okay you're leaning in right now for most of us the sound that comes into our right ear travels better to our brain than the sound that comes in the left ear huh. that's also why when you grab your child and you really want them to hear something mm. just whisper it in their right ear right ear. clean your Room. See, it works so much better. Because three hosts are better than one. Or two for that matter. This is Family Life, and we are a friend you can turn to.